props. Now props are an ingenious way to lure people in. Now if you're like me, I'm not very good at making props at all. I'm not very good at making anything at all. I'm a very creative person, but uh, making arts and crafts are not my specialty in the slightest. But props are things that just amaze a game. They change the way a game works. The whole setting, the whole feel, the whole, ooh, ooh, this is, this is interesting. This is cool. This is actually a big event. It's not just a, we're sitting down with pen and paper and we have to imagine it all in our mind. I can actually visualize it. I can actually see it. Let me give you an example of what I did. One of my first games, and I know I've talked about this before in previous sections, Curse of Strahd. Gothic horror, vampire, Halloween-esque. I got a my long dining room table. I put a black sheet over it. I didn't even have a tablecloth. Put a black sheet over it. I bought some cheap candles that cost like a pound. Like long red candles. Um, we, I happened to in the house have two candle holders that I put them in. I then got red plates to put on the table. I then got goblets. Plastic goblets that you get for Halloween. And I poured cranberry juice in them to see like red wine or like um, blood. It made such a difference. Just setting the scene for them, they were like, oh, oh, that's amazing. And they came in and they were like, wow. So straight away, their first impression of the game was, wow, that's what you want. Now, if you run in a public area, then it's a little bit harder to do this. But if you're running a game at home, there is no excuse for trying to set the scene. Give yourself a budget. I always used to do this and I'm not by any means rich. £20, £10, whatever you want to say, this is my budget for trying to find things and then spend time. I really enjoyed it, going to charity shops, finding things for my setting. Oh, I'm going to have that. I'll use that. And this links to my other bit about just props in general. What are they and what do they do? I've got in my room now three bags of random crap, random props that I use in my games go, well, look, this is what you find, this is what you have. I literally go into a charity shop, oh, it's 25p, it's 50p. Wow, this is amazing, I'm gonna use this. This is gonna be a da 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 da. You just literally make it up. You're literally like, I see these things and they give me inspiration. Let me show you. Okay, you might be able to see, look, little Tesco bag, I don't keep it in anything, anything um, big. Let me go about some of the props. Prop number one, this was a pound. I found it in a charity shop. Um, sorry for the mic, but I'm gonna ding it. It's a bell. It is just a bell that you'd have at a front of desk. Now you could use this as you go into the bar, you go into the shop, you see a bell that you can ding. I didn't. I used this in D&D as a magic item where they could summon a butler. So they've got this and every time they, I'm not gonna do it because it's very loud on the mic. Ding! Butler Jeeves would appear. Hello, how can I help you, sir? Oh, could you hold these bags for me? They would get the butler to do. And then if they ding it again, the butler poofs and he disappears. And if they summon the butler at different times, this was just such a big thing in my game. If they summon the butler at different times, like if it was late at night, he'd be in his pajamas. And he'd be like, oh, what's the problem, sir, at this time? Do you know, because it wasn't the appropriate time to summon him. So it became a whole thing where I, engaged, I made an NPC out of it. I made your magic item. And all of that came from when I went to a charity shop that's like a cheap sort of like thrift shop if you're American, literally just looked at it and went, that's 50p, I can make a story out of that. That's what you need to do. Whatever it is that inspires you that you know you can make a story out of, do it. Let me get you another item. Okay, I don't know if you can see these very well. Don't ask me what these are or where I got them from. I believe, again, they were from a charity shop, but they are these little things that open out. They, if you actually know the actual purpose of these, I don't know. I found these and these inspired me. They look like things that eat things. And I got my character to use this as a magic item for teleporting. And what they do is they literally click it and then it goes big and then they stand in it and then they sink into it. I took the idea from Harry Potter where they flush themselves in the toilet, very similar to that, but using these. So, random, just random, random rubbish that you could use. You could even, oh, I've got a pen here, I've got a Sharpie. Use it for something. You find a pen that when you draw, 
it breaks reality and you can pull things out to actually go through to somewhere else. There's a wall in your way. You draw lines on the wall. It rips the wall down as you take something from within and then you pull the wall back up. You then rub out the lines. Pen. That's a pen. You could do that with a quill. Just easy things. I've got here a random little Freddo box that my partner got for me because it's got a little Freddo frog in it. But it's a treasure chest. And she was like, you could use this for your story. You could use this as a little treasure chest. Why not? It's just so easy. Another easy prop that you can make if you prefer to make things rather than just buy them from a charity shop like I do, which is really easy. I did an ice arena. A combat ice arena. Now, the way I did it. Water, ice. So, water and ice. Pretty much free. It, maybe you need the ice holder, but I already have one in my freezer for ice cubes. And that's it. And I used a old sweet tin, put water in it, and I put ice cubes in it. So I used water and ice cubes. Now, I'll tell you why I put the ice cubes in to give it lumps, and then I put it all in the freezer. And then as I did that, they literally had an ice rink that they could go around. Now, the second time I did this, I made it even better. I put food colouring in it. I put blue and purple food colour in it to give it that real texture and colour so that it looked like magical ice. And literally, when I show, you'd have to do this as a home game or be very quick with your combat because otherwise it would all melt. But they absolutely loved it. They looked at it and went, here's your ice ring. Right, get on. Put everyone on there. And literally the... The forks and the heels from the ice cubes that were coming out, the colours, and it was really funny. And even when a bit melted, they were like, oh no, I'm falling in, quick, I have to move. And then we made that part of the game that if, if they go in the water, they're going to drown or they're going to die or it's going to be really cold. And then we did another one where they could actually get knocked into it. I remember doing a similar one where I made these little bridges. Don't ask me, they weren't very good. They were literally two bits of string and lollipop sticks stuck to them. I think I used my glue gun to stick them. And then I tied them like a bridge. And underneath, there was poison, green water. And all I did was I had a basin of water and green food colouring. Because I love my food colouring. It's by food colouring. It's just great for props. And then literally, they go across the bridge. And if they or the enemy fall in, they go in the poison. And it's like, oh no, I'm falling into the poison. And it, it's just a visual representation that really helps. Now, if you're more crafty than me... You could make so many things. If you give something to a player, if they're receiving something in game, it can be a prop. Why not make it a prop? Easy thing as well, tea staining. Tea staining is so, so easy to do. Boil the kettle, put a tea, but I always do it like this, maybe other people do it differently. Pour it into a cup, the hot water, put the tea bag in, let it cool down a bit, take the tea bag, rub the paper. Gently rub the paper so the tea bag doesn't break. You've got tea stained paper. It's so easy to do. And it makes it look like old paper. It look, makes it look ancient. You could then use an ink pen to write in ink. So it looks like it's all done. Roll it up as a scroll. Maybe get a bit of string to tie it up. If you really want to be really fancy, you can do all the um, stamping. But that's just something a bit extra. If you want to make it really easy, then that is it. Tea stain, write in ink, tie it with a bit of string. Oh, you find a letter. Bam. Here's your quest. Bam. And it's just something you can always use. It's a prop that you can just continuously use. And it's so easy to make. Ask your players. Any of you good at making props? Could you make me this? Don't tell them what it's for. Don't let any of the other players know. And it could be a little secret between you and that player. Oh, look, you made me something. I had a player who was really good at making potions. And she made me one. And I was like, Thank you. I'm not going to tell anyone about that. Shh. And then we brought it out and she was really proud because she made it and it's been showcased in front of everyone else and it was their little secret. And then when they find out what the potion does, I have so many players who go, oh, it's an actual thing. And they're like, what? They're like, oh. Like when I say you find a bell, they don't actually realise that it's an actual thing. And I go, there you go. Be sensible with it. You have to pick certain players because, geez, that can get really annoying. But build up this rubbish. I always call it, <laughs> my partner always calls it rubbish. And I call it literally stock. Right, I'm building up. I'm building up props. I need resources. I need this. I need that. Right. Halloween's coming up around the corner. Sorry to timestamp this, but 
I'm getting ready for my Halloween game. I'm grabbing things. I'm going, oh, I like these tea lights. I'm going to get these. Oh, I like this. I'm going to grab this. I'm grabbing things all ready for my game, for my dastardly game of Halloween. Setting is everything in Halloween. Gothic horror, it's everything if it's dark, dim lights. Ominous music needs to be playing. I need music. And when you think of props, a lot of people don't think of music. Music in games is essential. If you're doing a home game, especially at home, you need music on. Have a playlist ready of different music, background music, and when they go combat, com uh, combat playlist. You will use it constantly. I made it, it took me about an hour to make a playlist of village music, combat music, and sad music. I use it all the time, it's great. I just literally play uh, background music, and background music plays, and then, ding, and then I change it to combat when it's combat. Sometimes in my gothic horror games, if a piano starts to play on the music all of a sudden, I'll quickly go, uh, and you see a piano, and it's playing itself, and it seems to be rolling down the street following you. And they're like, what is this piano following? And it matches because the music's playing, and they're like, oh, we've got to get it to stop. And then if they destroy the piano, I then change the track or something. So it's just engaging the music with your game. Really good to use, and I'd recommend just go on YouTube. Type in combat music, fantasy music, use that. It makes a difference to your players. Props enhance the whole experience. They are not necessary. I will say again, they're not necessary. But I guarantee they will enhance your experience. And I think you'll enjoy making them and creating them, if you're like me. And then when you see the players enjoy them, it just changes the game entirely.